Hi, welcome to Shoe Pack Sports. And um, on this episode, this is our first foray into professional football, NFL, and we may be doing some college football also. But this episode is a short episode on basic terms that you'll hear while you're watching the games. Most of you probably know what they are, but I'm going to go over some offensive terms and some defensive terms. And uh, full disclosure, I'm a New York Jets football fan, in case you haven't noticed, but I love the NFL and I love college football. I watch as much as I could, though I kind of have a limit having kids and grandkids and other obligations. But to me, it's a great season, the fall, and it's kind of like your biggest reward after the summer, which I love. But I'm going to go into these terms and hopefully it'll make it easy. If you don't know them, uh, it'll make it easy for you to understand. And if you do know them and maybe your spouse or partner watches games with you and doesn't, maybe you have them watch this to get a, a basic understanding. So they could, they'll know what Tony Romo was saying, what Troy Aikman's saying, what Chris Collinsworth is saying. Before I start, I'd, I'd love to give a trivia question. And I do this in all my episodes on my Shoe Pack Sports, I, which is a focus on youth sports. And I encourage you all, if you're involved in any youth sports, to check it out. But here's a trivia question, and we'll come back to this, the answer at the end. Okay, who is the first Super Bowl quarterback to ever throw for 400 yards? Okay, who's the first quarterback in the NFL in a Super Bowl to throw for 400 yards? All right, let's get into it right away. It'll be a short session. And I try to pin down what I think is the most common verbiage used when you're watching a game. So it's easy for you. And first we're gonna talk about offensive personnel. All right, I'm holding this up. If you look here, you'll see where it says 11 personnel. You know what, I'm gonna take this off the clipboard just so it's easy to hold. All right. You'll see it right here. It says 11 personnel. When they use a number, the only two positions you are concerned about is running back and tight end. That's all it refers to. On a, and the first number they give you is the number of running backs that are on the field. So 11 personnel, the first number is one. So you know there's one running back. The second number they give you, and I have it right over here, is the number of tight ends. So 11 personnel, you're gonna have one running back and one tight end, okay? 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end. I went to a uh, website and this is unconfirmed, but interestingly, it looked pretty good uh, they said the Rams use 11 personnel 84% of the time. The Bills use it 71% of the time. Tampa Bay uses it 69% of the time. What's common amongst those three teams is that they're all winning teams. Okay, so I thought that was interesting. 11 personnel. It's probably what you're going to hear the most because it's probably run the most. The next personnel is the 12 personnel. All right. So you have one running back and you have two tight ends. And apparently Miami ran the 12 personnel the most in the NFL last year, uh, ran it 61% of the time. Okay. Again, the only number we're concerned about uh, positions are running backs and tight ends. The number they're giving has nothing to do with quarterbacks or wide receivers. It's running backs and tight ends. All right. 21 personnel, two running backs, one tight end. And you can see it here, the two running backs, one tight end. Uh, the 49ers ran it 34% of the time. The next is 13 personnel. That's one running back 
and three tight ends. All right, Cleveland ran at 17% of the time. We're starting to get into short yardage situations when we're stacking up the line with uh, uh, more tight ends. And a lot of times on these short yardage situations, they'll stick in a, a offensive tackle as a tight end. All right, so that's 13 personnel. 22 personnel, two, two running backs, two tight ends. Baltimore ran that 14% of the time. Okay, let's turn this over. Zero personnel, as you see, there are no running backs and no tight ends. Situations that call for this a lot of times uh, and not limited to are like a, a quick pass, bubble scream, or even a Hail Mary, zero personnel, all right? 23 personnel, two running backs and three tight ends. Okay, this is when you're getting some big bodies in there and, and for <clears throat> short yardage. So that's the basic personnel. They're an endless amount, which I'm not getting into, but that, that I'm telling you is gonna be like 80 to 90% of the time when you're watching an NFL game. All right, now let's get to defense. We'll go through this. Just go through some basic. You all probably notice four, three defenses when you have four linemen, three linebackers. Four, three linemen running and linebackers. Nothing to do with the cornerbacks or safeties. Three, four, three linemen, four linebackers. Okay. They have what they call gaps. You don't have to be too concerned, but just keep in mind like the A gap is each side of the center, B gap, each side is the guard, C gap, tackle, outside tackle. Keep in mind that it starts around the centers. The center starts with the letter A, okay, on either side. The last thing is an interesting, well, the second to last thing is the you're going to be here in terms like one technique, two technique, three techniques. Quickly, the one technique is where they line up on the outside shoulder of the tackle. Zero technique is when their head's up with the center. Two technique is where head's up with the guard. Three technique, which you're going to hear the most, outside shoulder of the guard on either side. Okay. Three technique players, just so you know, uh, Aaron Darnold, uh, yeah, Donald of uh, the Rams is one. Queen and Williams of the Jets is another. Those are prototypical three technique linemen. Okay. Four technique, head up on the tackle. Five technique, outside shoulder of the tackle. Very basic. Again, the most common you're going to hear is three technique, second most common might be the zero or one technique, or it could be the two technique. So you can look at that again. And remember the gaps start from the center, a gap is on each side. You'll also hear the announcers, they'll call the linebackers different names. You'll hear them say like most common, the Mike linebacker, you also hear them say the Sam, and the will. The Mike linebacker, that's in reference to the player that calls the signals, Mike meaning microphone. The Sam linebacker is the linebacker um, on the strong side. The will linebacker is the linebacker on the weak side. The strong side means the offense has the tight end. You'll notice a lot of times the will linebacker on the weak side will be a little bit smaller in the 235 to 245 pound range. The Sam linebacker is a little bit heavier. Okay. And remember the Mike linebacker, it calls the signals. That's all we're going to go into today. And um, I want to thank you for watching this. 
Keep in mind, we are working on an NFL college football show, so please subscribe. We should have something up next week. If you're a football fan, if you want to check out our Jets podcast, it's JetsRewind.com. I have two co-hosts, Ralph Schrag and Ray Clifford, that are terrific. They kind of carry me on it, but they're really great NFL historians, and we always refer to a lot of things that have happened in the NFL. Let's get right to the trivia question. It was, who was the first quarterback to throw for over 400 yards in the Super Bowl? It happened in 2000. It was Kurt Warner, threw for 414 yards. Also, he threw for two touchdowns. And the um, their team, I guess the St. Louis Rams, Beat the Titans 23-16. It was a very exciting Super Bowl. For Marty Shupak and Shupak Sports, until next time.